Matthew Sargent. I'm the camp commander for Willie Grout Camp Number 25 uh, from Worcester, Massachusetts, and that's the Department of Massachusetts, Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. Uh, I've been a member of the camp since 2017, and I was elected camp commander two years ago. Um, I uh, I really enjoy the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War because of the the work that they do in the graves and remembering the graves, cleaning the graves, fixing the gravestones uh, for all the men that served in the Union in the Civil War. Um, obviously, it's such a long time ago, but a lot of the graves are in need of repair or they're just missing gravestones altogether. And I think it's really important that we as an organization take the time to identify, locate, document, create a database of where all the men are buried, and then help uh, find the stones that need to be fixed, repaired, or just put in place that were never put in place. Uh, so I was born and raised in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Uh, I graduated from the Massachusetts Maritime Academy in 2009. I sailed for nine years in the Merchant Marine. I also took a commission when I graduated from the Maritime Academy as an ensign in United States Navy Reserve. Uh, I've been, I'm still active in the reserves. This will be my 13th year and I currently hold the rank of Lieutenant Commander. Uh, one of the most memorable things I've done since you know becoming a member of the Suns is each year we, we, are, we flag the uh, Hope Cemetery in Worcester, which is an extremely large cemetery and it takes the whole camp all day, if not a couple days. And so each year that's one of my most memorable things with the camp. Um, there's so many interesting uh, stories that are waiting to be told in the cemetery um, you know, prisoners of war, Civil War nurses. Um, I think there's actually even one Confederate who's buried in a Worcester, Massachusetts cemetery, which I found to be interesting. But um, each year we've we've gotten the database that was put together in the 90s on it by hand, and each year we just progressively make that a better document so that we make sure that each man gets his flag on Memorial Day. Uh, I think the Suns is a great organization for uh, younger people to be able to, you know, get in touch with your ancestors and, and the, the life that they led and the service that they had uh, for the country. Um, and the Suns offers a great variety of opportunities, depending on what your interests are. Uh, with the Sons of Veterans Reserve, you can become the uniform uh, portion of the, you know, Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, um, the, the, the grave database uh, research project, so identifying the graves, uh, Eagle Scout and, and uh, ROTC, junior ROTC organizations, uh, just getting back, giving back to the community. Uh, there's just many different uh, avenues that you can, you know, be an active member of the Suns. So it's really about what you want to do and where your interests lie. Yep. So uh, the Sons of Union Veterans of Civil War is active in, in many of the um, veterans organizations throughout their communities, um, you know, soldiers' homes and uh, working with the American legions and the, the different, you know, veterans of foreign wars and that type of thing to, uh, you know, help uh, veterans in need or just help remembrance of all veterans and from any capacity. I'm Matthew Sargent, the third great grandson of Ivory Hansen, Company K, 3rd Main Infantry, Battery F, 3rd United States Artillery, and 7th Battery Main Light Artillery. Iru was born the 27th of December, 1837 in Maine to a free Baptist minister. He married Mary Luce the 3rd of June, 1861. And together they would have a number of children. Ida, born in 1865, George in 1867, Mabel in 1869, Aggie in 1871, Eva in 1875, Harry in 1877, and Edith in 1879. He worked in the shoe industry before the war and he enlisted the 1st of May, 1861, as a corporal in Company K, 3rd Maine Infantry, in Augusta, Maine. He was mustered into, the, into service the 4th of June, 1861, the day after he was married. He was transferred to the 3rd United States Artillery Battery F, the 16th of January, 1863. While serving with Company K of the 3rd Maine, he fought at the battles of Bull Run in July of 1861. This, uh, Battle of Fair Oaks, where he was wounded in action with a grazing wound to the head the 31st of May through the 1st of June, 1862. The Second Battle of Bull Run in August of 1862, and the Battle of Fredericksburg between the 12th and 15th of December, 1862. While serving with the U 3rd United States Artillery, 
He fought at the Battle of Chancellorsville, 27 April the 6th, May 1863, and the Battle of Gettysburg, 1st through the 3rd of July 1863. He was discharged the 1st of May 1864 at Brandy Station, Virginia, at the expiration of the Terms of Service. And he re-enlisted the 23rd of September 1864 at Augusta, Maine, with the 7th Battery Main Light Artillery as a substitute. He was discharged from the 7th Battery the 21st of June 1865, again at the expiration of the Terms of Service. And he fought with the 7th Battery at the Battle of Reams Station the 25th of August 1864, and the Battle of Fort Sedgwick the 30th of November 1864. He had a number of brothers who served in the war. Hiram enlisted at the age of 16 and died in Augusta, Maine before ever leaving the state. Samuel and Andrew both died while serving with the 2nd Maine Cavalry in Louisiana and Florida. And David Hansen, who he served with in the 7th Battery Maine Light Artillery. Uh, one of the things I, I'm most proud of while being a member of the Sons is the uh, identification of my great, 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 great uncle's grave, David Hansen, who served with the 2nd Maine Infantry and was uh, severely wounded um, and it was a stomach wound so he wasn't he was discharged for disability and it wasn't um, uh, a round it was a spent cannon round is what they think and it injured his and gave him a really bad hernia so he, he re-enlisted in the army and served with with his brother and my grandfather Ivory in the 7th Battery Main Light Artillery and was discharged at the end of the war and he died in 1875 from those wounds and from a strangulated hernia. Um, he, his grave went unmarked from the time of his death until 2018 while I was working at Maine Maritime Academy on reserve duty for the Navy. I was able to identify his grave and work with the Ven Veterans Administration and the Cemetery Commission to have a veteran stone issued for his gravesite. And thankfully through, through the Department of Maine, Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, we were able to have a ceremony to rededicate that grave for him. So while doing research about Ivory, I became interested in any and all information, documents, anything I could find. The Grand Army of the Republic Post had some documents that stated he was a member. Um, there was a 7th Battery Main Light Artillery Association where he was a member. Um, and I ordered his pension record as he lived, you know, pretty late into the, or late in his life and into the early 20th century. He, um, I thought there may be something worthwhile to read about in his pension record. And when the pension record showed up, um, this was included. So that's a, a photograph of him early in the war. You can see the company K on his hat. So uh, that's when he, you know, probably first enlisted in the army. And uh, this is a really nice treasure to have. Um, the, the archives did the best they could to take the a scanned copy of the photo. But uh, once, once everything kind of, calms down with COVID and the archives are back open. I'm hoping to have a archivist take a, you know, a better quality photo. Oh my God.